What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hilt, and in today's episode, I'm getting back into Dust. Now, I took a break from Dust for about a week, week and a half, to play Destiny Beta. And uh, this is my first game coming back from that, so I haven't played Dust in, in a while. And a week is a while. But, you know, check here. Check how, how well I did in a week and a half in Destiny. Now, I'm pretty pleased with these results. They're, I know they're not the best. Uh, many of you probably were t way better than this, but... You know, for me, uh, this is good. 2 to 3 KD is where I typically fall in a console shooter, since it's not my native platform. I'm really not good with a controller, uh, at least not compared to my mouse and keyboard skills. So I came away quite happy with this. I had a lot of fun, and um, it's over now, so I'm like, okay, get back to dust. But I have this problem, and I don't know if anybody else has it too. Whenever I take a break from dust, even for a week and a half, I come back and I can't aim. It's like I'm learning the game all over again as far as my gun game is concerned. Um, and so I'm expecting to really struggle here. And this first engagement just confirms it for me. I, I just can't, I mean, I'm bouncing all over the place. I can't get my aim to adjust properly and get on target. And that guy survives a surprisingly long time. Um, so I'm just, at this point, you know, I've just started this match, and I'm thinking, I this is going to suck. I can't aim. I can't shoot. How long is this going to take me to, to get back? I mean, it was just a week. Why can't I get back into this and, and play as well as I did a week and a half ago? And that's something that, you know, I've questioned quite a bit. I've left us, and I've come back for longer periods than this, and it just I come back feeling like a noob every time. And I don't know exactly why it is, but I have some theories. And I think part of it is that Dust's input control schemes, uh, the low visual quality is, it's like a special kind of shooter. <laughs> you know, it's that, it's that special shooter that we kind of all love and hate. And because, you know, it has the form of an FPS, but as far as the underlying con input controls are concerned, it's, it's different. And not different in a good way, it's different in a bad way, in my opinion. So, most FPS games follow a pretty similar input methodology. The controls feel similar, and even if there's slight differences, they've given you such a range of control settings that you can typically find the setting that you're accustomed to. So, you come into a game, and the first thing you typically do is you play with those control and input settings till you find the sensitivity you're accustomed to, and then the game plays very similar, at least as far as your input controls are concerned. It feels similar, it, it operates similarly, and you're able to very quickly utilize your muscle memory uh, to adjust and adapt to this new game. And as you saw, that's exactly what happened with Destiny. It was completely different, but it was different in a good way in that it tapped into the muscle memory that I've developed over 15 years of playing FPS games. And uh, I was able to very quickly, you know, within a couple games, uh, PvP, find my, gr my, you know, my, my stride, get those controls adjusted to where I was very comfortable with them, and uh, it ended up being a very good thing. Um, coming back to Dust, I was really frustrated. I started playing with, the you know, the, the input control settings, trying to find, and I just realized I just can't get it, these controls set to what I'm used to. So now I have to in a way, relearn that familiarity that I had, you know, just a week and a half ago. My, my brain dumped it, and my muscle memory is, uh, you know, it's really hard to fight against that, that long period of muscle memory. Uh, even though I've played, you know, dust on and off for two years now, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's every time I have to get reaccustomed to its controls because they're just so different from every other FPS out there. So I ended up, you know, not messing with the controls much this time because I, you know, the last couple times I had come and gone, I, I played with them again and I ended up right back, you know, I have my controls set to a sensitivity of 100 and it still feels slow and sluggish and it doesn't help that the frame rate, you know, is really low too. Um, I know a lot of people, especially a lot of PC gamers, have had a big beef with Destiny in that it's, even on the, the next generation consoles, it's 30 frames per second. And, but 
you know, even to me, like, I thought it was amazing because I'm coming from dust where, you know, if I can get 20 frames per second, I'm lucky. And if that, so 30 frames per second felt smooth and silky. It was, you know, I, I have to laugh a little bit because even though I have a pretty awesome computer, I haven't used it for gaming much. So I'm not, I'm not used to anything other than dust. And that sort of smooth input was just awesome. And coming back this game, I am, you know, there's something when the frame rate is this low, you really have to, to get accustomed to how low it is. And then you start picking up, okay, well, if I want to aim at this guy, I have to move this, my, you know, controls this far. And then, you know, that and will be just enough to deal with the low frame rate. And then I'll end up on target and Anyway, you lose that once you've had a much better system. At least I do. And I don't know if you guys are the same. You can tell me in the comments if you've come and, and gone from dust and found yourself, you know, really struggling like I am. Maybe you have your own theory. But for me, I, I, my theory is that it's, it's due to the fact that the input controls are so different. And, y you know, you lose that so quickly because it's just not tapping into your muscle memory. You have to build your own special muscle memory, and then it's since it's not long-term muscle memory. I don't even know if that's a thing, long-term muscle memory. <laughs> but if there is, I would I would say dust is a pretty good case study for the fact that you have long-term muscle memory and you have short-term muscle memory, because I can hop into just about any other game and tap into my first-person shooter muscle memory pretty quickly. In dust, it takes a little while for me to to get back. Um, So, you know, here's an interesting case study and strategy. You know, we're starting to push on that point. And for the first half of the game or more, we struggled. Because, all, and, and what's making the difference here, my assessment, is those dropship pilots. We have at least two, possibly three. But I, I know we have at least two. And they have changed the, the nature of the game for us. The enemy is now having to, they can't operate with impunity. They're having to seek for cover more often. They can't be out in the open. This is classic military strategy, where indirect fire, which is the closest thing that pythons provide, or at least indirect fire is the closest thing that they match, uh, forces the enemy infantry to, um, it forces them to move. You can't just get down behind cover as you can in direct fire. Uh, and so the combination of direct fire and indirect fire puts the enemy in a difficult situation. They have to move in order to avoid the indirect fire, but moving also exposes them to the direct fire of the infantry. So we're, we're kind of, this is kind of a classic example of what artillery can bring to the battlefield. And the enemy has to, to, to move on, on our objective, but they can't move in the open because of direct fire. And if they stay in, you know, cover for, to, to deal with, me as a, an infantry, they, they expose themselves to the to the missiles and the, you know the, the indirect fire, and I know it's not indirect fire, but it, it's, it acts like it. And so this over here, there's a, a spawn point over here. Enemies are coming in over near that null cannon, but they can't stay there. There's, they they're really exposed to the pythons. Um, they would probably love to just sort of peek out from cover and then shoot and go back to the cant. Um, the fact that they've got this python in hovering around them it really forces them. And uh, there aren't any pythons on them right now, but... Um... So anyway, this is this is something that, uh, you know, as a new player, you, you may not be able to do in Dust. You're accustomed to being able to do in other games, and that's react to the battlefield. If the enemy is doing one thing and you need to do another, you, you may not have the skill points for it, and that could be really frustrating if you're coming from a game like Battlefield, where, you know, the classes are free, you can switch into them or out of them, and it's really up to your skill as to how well you could perform in any of those classes. Not your, your skill point total, not, you know, some arbitrary number that determines whether you're good or you have the, the equipment necessary. And this is something I hope that they change out in Legion, to where... You know, it doesn't take long to get access to the basic suits, and the basic suits are just as powerful and effective. Um, the basic equipment and the basic weapons. And I, to be honest, I hope they deal, do away with all the, the equipment tiers. I think there should just be prototype 
and there should be lots of different variety and they should you know have different um, effects on the battlefield but get rid of equipment tiers uh, and then make it so that when you do get into your basic prototype suits they, they have meaningful suit bonuses and they're just as powerful as far as damage and, and uh, EHP as the uh, advanced specialized suits and what the specialized suits do is give you you know unique abilities uh, for the you know that particular race like you know um, having uh, reduced fitting costs for you know Kaldari weapons if you're in a Kaldari assault suit and being able to carry more ammo for that particular type of weapon you know just just things that that make that the the advanced specialized suits cool and and really allow us somebody who's uh, has a specialty to enhance that specialty but not give them such a distinct EHP module fitting um, benefit and you want to make those basic suits you know really easy to get into not require a lot of skill points because you want your players to be able to react to the battlefield to be able to fulfill a, a large number of roles and you're just not going to be able to do that if you you know if the game if legion follows the path of dust and requires millions and millions of skill points to to specialize into you know one role now you can be semi effective if you don't take everything to 5 and you you know you spread out and you get threes and whatever um, but then you're always going to be outclassed in every role that you you fulfill at least as far as the straight up numbers go now i think i'm proof you know, and there are a lot of people that are proof that, you know, um, the the equipment, the module, the skill imbalance doesn't mean everything. By playing well and playing strategically, you can uh, close that gap in a lot of circumstances. I mostly play with basic gear, and I can, you know, and granted this character has a lot of skill points, but I can play well with the low skill point character most of the time, and it's because I... You know, I've developed this set of unconscious strategies and tactics for Dust that, you know, helps me to analyze and assess the battlefield and pick the most appropriate course of action for my power level, my ability to deal damage, what's going on in the battle. And I hope you've seen that here. I'm playing very defensively. I'm not running out and trying to be that slayer. I'm not flanking on my own. I'm not playing the lone wolf. I know I can't. I just, my aim is not, I can't, my gun game right now is so bad. That if I were to try to run out and play that Slayer role, I would just be slaughtered myself. So I'm playing defensively. I'm playing with other players. I'm uh, watching the flanks and taking out those targets that are trying to do that sort of lone wolf attack thing. Um, and this is a very conscious decision. It's, it's kind of frustrating because I have this this sort of you know uh, thing inside me that says, "Hey, you you can fulfill this role." Uh, it's like when I, you know, as a kid growing up, I did martial arts a ton. Uh, it was my thing. And uh, I did it for years and years and years. But, you know, due to financial constraints, my family wasn't able to support that anymore. So, you know, the last final years of high school, I didn't do martial arts. And then started college and did, you know, some martial art club. And my brain was telling me I could do all kinds of things that I physically could no longer do. I just didn't have the conditioning for it. Um, and that's what I'm experiencing this game in dust my brain's telling me hey you can be that slayer you can go run out there you can flank you can do all these really you know things you're accustomed to but I just can't I know I can't so I'm fighting that and I'm you know because my my set of strategies is telling me no you're really struggling with your gun game you need to to switch it up you need to do something different play the support role and uh, what I'm trying to do is you know play that uh, with the plasma cannon it gives me some suppressive power not not like I would if I had a mass driver, you know, or I got into Python. But it gives me some suppressive ability, makes the enemy kind of think twice before approaching. If they're really smart, if they have any familiarity with the plasma cannon, they should know not to fear, fear it, because the, the chance of getting a direct shot is pretty slim. Uh, and it does happen, you've seen it this match, but it's not like the mass effect, the mass driver where you can just sort of spray an area and deal damage to a lot of people. And it's like, I have to to get direct hits or the plasma cannons useless and if there's a bunch of enemies only one of them is getting that direct hit and most of the others are going to take less than full splash damage uh, and i'm fine with that i like the direct hit nature of this weapon 
but uh, a lot of people still kind of fear it and as, as for its sort of suppressive capabilities um, and so I'm, that's how, kind of how I'm playing. Defensively I'm using the plasma cannon and the combat rifle together to um, sort of suppress the enemy, prevent them from having free roam and reign. Uh, we've done a pretty good job since we took that point of preventing them from massing up and the enemy's done a pretty poor job uh, of adjusting tactics to counter our pythons and to deal with the fact that we've been pretty solid. We don't have a lot of players running off and, and playing solo and so one thing you know that that holds true in a lot of games is that numbers count you know if there's three of us shooting one of you odds are we're gonna win so um you know this this round this this particular video has been a little bit scattered all over the place but i just want to highlight that you know it, it can be a struggle to get back into dust even if you take a short break now applying the right strategies and tactics you can do well um, in this match, I ended up going 15-1, and one, and that really surprised me. I was really surprised by that number, that result, considering how poorly I was able to aim. But by applying the right equipment and the right tactics, and having a team that was doing the same, uh, really paid off. So in this case, the, you know, the team members, we were just performing well. We just jived. We weren't really communicating any of that, but we, you know, it was a good match for that. But anyway, I hope this has kind of been insightful into uh, getting back into dust and, and at least one way that you can deal with you know, the, the, the learning curve that you'll experience. As always, my name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.